Here we are seeing the sagittal section of male pelvis. What we are seeing anteriorly is the cut section of the pubic symphysis. Posteriorly, this vertebral column is continuing with the sacrum ending in the coccyx. So between these two, the cavity which you are seeing is the pelvic cavity. So within the pelvic cavity, from front to back, what we are seeing is immediately behind the pubic symphysis, we are seeing the space which is the retropubic space or the space of retzius, which usually has loose areolar tissue, few lymphatics and veins, plus the pubovesical ligament in uh, case of males, pubovesical and pubocervical ligament in case of females. Behind this retropubic space of retzius, we are seeing the cavity of this urinary bladder. From this neck of the urinary bladder, because this is a male pelvis, below this urinary bladder we are seeing the cut section of the prostate gland. Within this prostate gland, we are seeing the extension of this prostatic urethra. Below this prostatic urethra, what we are seeing is the pelvic diaphragm and further below that will be the urogenital diaphragm. Now coming posterior to the urinary bladder, here we are seeing the ureters opening into the wall of the urinary bladder. Further behind that you are seeing the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles. This is the seminal vesicle, this is the vas deferens. So vas deferens here and the seminal vesicle. The vas deferens joining with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct which will be passing through the prostate to open into the prostatic urethra. So these are the structures which are lodged immediately behind the urinary bladder that is ureter, vas deferens and the seminal vesicle the vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle joining to form the ejaculatory duct. Further behind that, what we are seeing here is the cavity of rectum continuing with the cavity of the anal canal in the lower portion. We are also seeing the anal columns here. Behind the rectum and anal canal, in this lower portion, what we are seeing this fibrous part will include the upper layer of Waldeyer's fascia the middle layer of the pelvic diaphragm and further below that the anococcygeal raphe. In the upper part that is immediately between the rectum and the sacrum we have this mesorectal space which contains the median sacral artery, various branches of sacral plexus, sympathetic trunk and the parasympathetic nerves which will be supplying this pelvic viscera. Now these are the viscera which are present in the pelvic cavity. So far we saw the viscera within the pelvic cavity. Now let us talk about the peritoneal disposition. Mm -hmm. So this peritoneal layer which is covering the posterior aspect of the anteroabdominal wall will enter the pelvic cavity where first it will cover the superior surface of the urinary bladder. Then between the urinary bladder and the rectum it forms a small depression here known as rectovesical pouch and then it goes on to reflect on the anterior surface of the rectum. For the rectum, it covers only the anterior surface of the middle one-third of the rectum, anterior and lateral aspects of the upper one-third of the rectum. The lower one-third of the rectum does not have any peritoneal covering. Where this rectovesical pouch is present, there is a fibrous septum which separates the urinary bladder and the adnexa anteriorly and rectum and anal canal posteriorly. That sheath of connective tissue is the fascia of Denon venius, which is again formed because of the zygosis of two layers of rectovesical pouch that will act as a bloodless plane through which a surgeon can approach and do the surgery in this area. Now, tracing this peritoneum on either side, on either side of the urinary bladder, the peritoneum gets forms a depression that forms the paravesical fossa and on either side of the rectum, it forms the pararectal fossa. Now, from after covering this rectum, it then continues upwards to cover the posterior abdominal wall. So that is the peritoneal depression. So first it covers the upper surface of the urinary bladder, does not cover the posterior aspect or the base of the bladder. It forms the rectovesical pouch, then can covers the anterior aspect of upper two thirds of the rectum, where for the middle one third it covers only anterior surface, whereas in the upper one third it covers both anterior surface as well as lateral aspects of the rectum. So now we are showing you the section of female pelvis. So certain things are similar to that of the male pelvis. This is the cut section of the pubic symphysis anteriorly. Posteriorly the vertebral column continuing with the sacrum and the coccyx that remains same. Immediately in front of the sacrum and coccyx we are seeing this rectum continuing as the anal canal where you are seeing the anal columns here. 
behind the rectum and anal canal and this vertebral column we have in the lower portion the valdeus fascia pelvic diaphragm and the enococcygeal raphe in the lower part in the upper part the mesorectal space containing all the nerves vessels and the loose areolar tissue anteriorly immediately behind the pubic symphysis the retropubic space again is similar to that of the males as i told earlier in case of males it has only the pubo vesical ligament here it has pubo vesical as well as pubo cervical ligament also then behind the retropubic space we have this urinary bladder till here whatever i am mentioning they are same uh, or similar to what we have seen in the male pelvis now from here onwards what i'll be talking will be different below the urinary bladder it just continues as the urethra does not have the prostate gland which we had shown in case of the male urethra uh, male pelvis posterior to the urinary bladder we only see the opening of the ureters into the wall of the urinary bladder again the seminal vesicles and vas deferens and ejaculatory ducts which are part of the male reproductive system they will be obviously absent here now between the urinary bladder and rectum the major difference is the presence of this uterus and its various parts so that is what we are going to describe here so what i'm holding here is the body of the uterus this is the fundus part and this is the body there is a small constriction here that is the isthmus below the isthmus the body will continue as the cervix of the uterus now the cervix will enter into this long canal at an angle that is the vaginal canal so body of the uterus cervical canal continuing with the vaginal canal so this is a, these are extra viscera which are seen in case of female uh, in case of female pelvis from the body on either side we can see the extension that is the fallopian tube this is the intramural part which has gone inside the immediately next to that this is the isthmus continues with the ampullary portion and ends at the fimbriated end behind that what you are seeing here is the mass of ovary which is the female gonad the fallopian tube ovary various ligaments and blood vessels will all be having a sheet of peritoneum which forms the broad ligament so broad ligament on either side and the uterus and vaginal canal in the center they will form a curtain which separate the pelvic cavity into an anterior half and posterior half this whole feature is a new feature for female pelvis now coming to the peritoneal disposition like in case of males the peritoneum which comes from the posterior aspect of the anterior abdominal wall will continue to cover the superior surface of the urinary bladder here it forms a small depression that is the uh, utrovesical pouch now from this utrovesical pouch the peritoneum gets reflected onto the body of the uterus please note it does not cover the cervix or the vagina it reaches at the level of isthmus and continues to cover the body covers the fundus covers the posterior aspect of the body covers the supra vaginal part of the cervix and a small portion of the vagina then it gets reflected onto the anterior aspect of rectum where as we had told in case of males it covers only the anterior aspect of the middle one third of rectum anterior and lateral aspects of the upper one third of the rectum the lower one third of rectum not having any peritoneal covering now between this uterus and the rectum again there is a depression this is the most dependent part of the female peritoneal cavity that is called as recto vesicle or recto uterine pouch or otherwise called as pouch of douglas recto uterine pouch or pouch of douglas so in a upright position usually this is the most dependent or part of the peritoneal cavity so any collection of fluid will get collected here and it is easily assessed by doing the per vaginal examination wherein the fingers are inserted through the vagina to check if there is any collection in the pouch of douglas that is one of the things which we will be assessing when we do the per vaginal examination so again in like in case of males on either side of the uh, urinary bladder we have the para vesical fossae and on either side of the rectum we have the para rectal fossae so with that we come to the conclusion of study of the sagittal sections of male and female pelvis so again quickly revising pubic symphysis immediately behind that the retropubic space further behind that the urinary bladder and urethra in case of females urinary bladder prostate and the prostatic urethra in case of males below that we have the pelvic diaphragm further below that we have the urogenital diaphragm behind the urinary bladder in case of females it is only the ureter but in case of males we also find the vas deferens and the seminal vesicle 
for males immediately behind these viscera there will be rectum and anal canal but in case of females we see the uterus that is fundus body of the uterus continuing with the cervix of the uterus and then we also see this vaginal canal behind that we are seeing the rectum continuing down as the anal canal posterior to the rectum and anal canal we are seeing in the lower portion the valdeus fascia the pelvic diaphragm and the anococcygeal raphe which connects the uh, anal canal or rather which positions the anal canal and connects it to the coccyx and sacrum and then up in the upper portion however between the rectum and the sacrum we have this mesorectal space so with that we complete the study of sagittal section of male and female pelvis